this is Ashley with Ashley Says So. I am back with another Old Hollywood Scandals video and today we are going to talk about actor Ryan O'Neal. Now y'all have been suggesting him a long time. I didn't know why, but baby, I know why now. Now this man is not a spade coolie, but he still ain't nothing too nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you now, you might wanna put on your helmets. Some of you may not want to stay, but if you're ready to ride into war, let's start by listening to this disclaimer. The whole video is hearsay, rumor, and gossip that I find on TV, online, magazine, books, and I ball it all up and I tell you guys a story. It's all for entertainment purposes only. Now let's get to Ryan. O'Neill was born on April the 20th, 1941 in Los Angeles, California. His name was Patricia Ruth Oga and she was an actress and his father's name was Charles O'Neill and he was a screenwriter. And on top of Ryan, the O'Neills had one other son, but Ryan was always the standout child because you see, Ryan had a temper. Baby, from a very early age, gossip claims that Ryan was always throwing tantrums and busting his brother upside the head. His father and mother didn't know what to do, but they were desperate to find an outlet where their son could express himself. So his father Charles came up with an idea. He decided to build a boxing ring in the backyard. Ryan was only seven years old around this time, but the idea was a success. Ryan loved boxing. He was great at it. His father was said to have wanted Ryan to grow up to train for the Golden Gloves because Ryan had a super punch. But that was the problem. Once Ryan learned how to hone his skills and get that super punch, the boy didn't stop punching. He got into many squabbles as a child and a teenager, and when he was 18, he got into his biggest squabble yet. Gossip claims that Ryan walked into a party and there was this guy there, and I guess the guy was giving him a stink eye or a mean face. Baby, Ryan ain't asked no questions. I ain't said no words, just turned right around and punched dude square into his face, punched him through a wall. He didn't even know this man. This man was a complete stranger to him. And yes, the police did arrest Ryan and he was supposed to serve a long-term prison stint for assault. But look at that face up there. Look at that clean cut blonde hair. Those pretty blue eyes. Does that look like the face of a dangerous man? A man that's supposed to be serving a whole lot of time? The justice system thought not. And so because of that, Ryan only ended up serving 51 days of his total sentence. And Ryan was back on the streets, hadn't learned nobody's lesson at all. As a matter of fact, yes, he did learn a lesson. He learned that he had great looks. And because he learned that, he figured that he didn't want to waste his good looks being no dog on boxer he wanted to act and his mother agreed so by the 1960s his mother had pulled several strings and ryan was starring in multiple tv shows and every time that boy appeared on camera with that doggone face baby ratings went up people needed to know just who this beautiful man was and when he got the role of rodney harrington on peyton's place ryan became a bona fide star he was one of America's handsome sons, honey. Every man wanted to be him. Every woman wanted to be with him. And Ryan had his way with every woman that was throwing it to him, honey. But he had his eye on one woman. And that was actress Joanna Moore. As soon as Ryan saw Joanna, he pursued her and he wooed her. And she felt like he was the perfect gentleman. And so they got married in the year 1963. Some sources say 1964. Regardless of what year they got married, married. I know that when they did get married, baby, folks just went insane. I mean, they were adorable. They were one of the main celebrity power couples of the 1960s. And then when they added two children to the mix, a daughter named Tatum and a son named Griffin, a lot of people felt like they were just burst from all of the cuteness and all of the joy. You know, they felt like life was heaven for this couple and that it couldn't get any better. And baby, them folks thought like lick because allegedly Joanna was getting slapped like slick. Child, the folks say as soon as Joanna said yes to that ring and them cheering, Ryan changed up like what? Yes, a mighty morphin power ranger. Baby said Ryan was cheating with every skirt that walked by and was beating that woman silly. Joanna was going through hell. Hell. In fact, she was going through so much hell that her looks started to fade and so her career started to slow down. And this, of course, depressed her, so she started to drink to ease the pain. By 1966, though, Joanna was done with it, so she took her children and she left. 
And as soon as she left, Ryan showed what kind of dog he truly was. Because baby, the folks say that the day or the day after Ryan and Joanna's divorce finalized, he married his co-star from Peyton's Place, honey, Lee Taylor Young. Joanna was absolutely devastated because she knew that Ryan had been cheating, but she had no idea he was cheating with his co-stars. Heck, he had been parading this woman in her face, having this woman smiling at her, shaking hands and stuff like that. And so this was just cruel to Joanna, you know, cruel to her spirit. And now she even started to do drugs to get away from the pain. And because she was drinking and doing drugs, she could no longer care for their children. Tatum, her daughter, said later on in life that she and her brother would sometimes have to go at least a day without food. Not only that, they lived in squalor. Uh, Tatum said that their bathroom was the floor. Baby, wherever they were standing at that moment, that is where they went pee pee boo boo. But while Joanna and the children were living horribly, Ryan was living it up. Oh honey, him and his new wife all on vacation all the time. They buying new cars, new furniture, possibly even a new house. Eventually, they even have their own son. And so it's like Ryan has a whole new life. You know what I'm saying? He done forgot all about his ex-wife and the kids he had with her. You know, he got his new little family unit. But the tee hee hee was on him because one day the court system called him and they told him that he needed to get custody of his children because they were taking custody from Joanna because of the way she had the children living. Thankfully, Ryan did step up and take custody of his children, but I think, as well as most people think, he really resented doing this. Child of folks say that the son Griffin used to get every single day. Baby said one time Ryan did Griffin so doggone bad that the boy was different colors all over his doggone body. Said that when people asked Griffin what was wrong, he was young, maybe around nine years old, so he didn't really know what to say. So he basically said, um, I fell down the stairs and I couldn't catch myself because my hands were in my pockets. Now what kind of excuse is that? This boy sitting up here trying to make folks believe that he's just rolling down the steps uh, 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 and his hands in his pockets the whole time. That's how sad the situation was. And Ryan would just do little evil stuff. Like sometimes he forced his son Griffin to play pool with him and then when Griffin won, Ryan would become extremely upset and jealous. The folks say that Griffin would be scared to hit the eight ball in to win the game because he knew as soon as he did, and baby Tatum said one time the slap and the punch wasn't good enough for Ryan. She said she sat up there and watched Ryan take a pool cue and started busting Griffin upside the head. And this dirty treatment from Ryan O'Neal to his son Griffin like basically never ended. Uh, rumor has it that when Griffin was 16 years old, I guess he said something back smart to Ryan or Ryan deemed it as smart. Baby said he cocked his fist back and knocked all Griffin's fronts out. And Tatum likes to tell the story of what happened to her brother Griffin because she felt like her brother Griffin had it harder than her. But baby, believe me, her behind had it hard too. In fact, you already got your helmet on. Her story is the one where you need to buckle it up under your chin. So rumor has it that when Griffin and Tatum first came to live with Ryan, Ryan was basically walking around like Ike Turner. What am I do with two more kids, huh? Somebody tell me what I'm gonna do with two more kids. Then he got the bright idea that he knew exactly what he was going to do with two more kids, or at least one of them. He was going to increase his wealth, increase his star power, and he chose his daughter Tatum. And what he chose her for is to start in a movie with him, a movie called Paper Moon. And at this time, Tatum is only nine years old. Well, it's Tatum's first time in a movie and this baby is a natural. I mean, she holds her own acting with her father and the movie is a smash hit. And Ryan is pleased with this. You know, his daughter Tatum is good for something. But to Ryan's surprise, not only is his daughter Tatum good at something, she's better than him at something because when the Oscar nominations came out for that year, Tatum was the only one of that movie who was nominated for an Oscar award for Best Supporting Actress. Ryan is furious. How could he be beat out by a little girl? How could Tatum be nominated for anything in her first movie? This is his daughter we're talking about. Baby, he was so jealous that when Tatum heard the news, she actually ran up to tell him, Daddy, Daddy, I was nominated for an Oscar. Y'all knew it was coming. Cha, Tatum got to hold in her mouth and didn't talk about that Oscar again. 
But she didn't have to talk about it. You know why? Because she actually won the Oscar that year. And Ryan, her father, was so petty and so ticked off by this that he didn't even come to the Oscar ceremony. But not only did he not come, Joanna Tatum's mother also didn't show up. Now you may be biting your fingers at this point thinking, uh-oh, you know, if he hauled off on her just because she was nominated, baby, now that she has won, he probably gonna throw up against the wall. Well, baby, that probably didn't happen, but something extremely, extremely weird did happen. Ryan started to court Tatum. You heard me right. I said court Tatum. Folks say Ryan started dressing nine-year-old Tatum up like a grown woman and started taking her to Hollywood parties. At these parties, there were definitely ex-drugs and rock and roll. Some stories claim that he would even try to goad Tatum to, you know, loosen up, you know, go enjoy the party. But that's nothing compared to this next thing he started to do. Because after he felt like he'd courted her enough, he invited her to his bedroom. I wish I was lying, y'all, but no. This man would have Tatum sleeping with him. And Tatum and Ryan have both said that there was never any full-on molestation or full-on assault, but yes, she would sleep in the bed with him. But you know what? I actually don't believe that there was never no assault or nothing like that. And by the end of this video, y'all ain't gonna believe that mess either. But anyways, like I said, per what they say, there was never any thing that happened they just slept together but regardless of if anything happened or not the whole thing was downright wrong and it was downright weird actress Ursula Andrus who was Ryan's girlfriend at one point said she came over to spend the night with him one night so they dive in the bed all giggling smiling doing all kind of touchy touchy feely feely Ursula say the covers get lifted up and baby Tatum laying there looking at them like this girl Ursula said that she didn't know what to think. But she said that Tatum and Ryan were acting like it was okay. You know, they were acting like it was normal. And just like Ryan had Tatum doing things that was uh, very grown up and morally wrong, he also was doing the same thing with Griffin. No, he was not inviting Griffin to sleep with him, but uh, rumor has it that he made his son Griffin snort cocaina when Griffin was only years old. But the kicker is, not only was Ryan O'Neal doing this weird, crazy stuff with his family, he was also treating other people like they were nothing. Now see, him and his second wife, Lee, ended up divorcing in the early 1970s because just like he did his first wife, he started cheating and busting Lee upside the head. And while he was a bachelor, he dated everybody and their mama. Bianca Jagger, Jacqueline Bissett, Diana Ross, Barbara Streisand, Joan Collins, etc., etc. And one of those women he dated was also Angelica Houston. Well, Angelica said that right when she and Ryan started dating, she came over to his house for a date. And uh, while they were eating, she had to use the bathroom. And I guess Angelica had to boo-boo or something like that because baby, all I know is that she said she opened the door to leave out of the bathroom. Baby, she walked into a headbutt. Baby Angelica said Ryan O'Neal headbutted her so hard that she saw stars. Talking about, why are you in the bathroom so long? What you doing in here? You know better than to keep me waiting like this. What you think this is? Woo! Child. A hot mess. The folks say that Angelica Houston held her forehead and got the H on up out of there. Now I know we've talked about some of the people that Ryan O'Neal dated, but one of the people that he was known best for dating was Farrah Fawcett. And while a lot of people know a lot about their relationship, a lot of people don't know just how messy their relationship started. Because you see, Farrah Fawcett was actually married to a man by the name of Lee Majors. And Lee Majors was a very good friend to Ryan O'Neal. So gossip claims that one day, I guess Lee Majors had business out of town or something like that. So he calls up Ryan O'Neal trying to be this big boss. Hey, yo, Ryan. Yeah, what you doing, buddy? Yeah, well, you know, I need you to take my lady out. You know, Farrah, the beautiful woman that I'm with. Just show her a good time around the town. Handle that for me. Ryan handled it all right. Farrah spent a little time with Ryan O'Neal, and that charm was so doggone strong, she ended up divorcing her husband just to get with Ryan. Ryan abandoned Tatum and Griffin to uh, get with Farrah Fawcett. He moved out of the house with them to be with Farrah Fawcett. And Tatum, growing up the way she did with her father, 
took this very hard. Gossip claims that she looked at Farrah Fawcett as competition and she got very depressed because she felt like Farrah Fawcett was so much more beautiful than she was. And so when she talked to her father, you know, she kind of was like, I can't believe that you left me. I can't believe you're now with Farrah. Well, whatever she said, Ryan told her, well, yeah, I mean, you need to get like Farrah. You need to lose some weight if you want to be as pretty as Farrah is. Farrah is beautiful. And when he responds like this, Tatum is absolutely destroyed, of course. You know, she is very distraught. Allegedly, a couple of weeks later, she tries to slice and dice and take herself off the planet. Honey, why come the folks say that when Ryan O'Neal was called about this, he came and looked at Tatum's wrist and told her, you cut them wrong. See, now if you would have cut them this way, then you may have gotten the result you were looking for, but no, nah, baby, you cut them wrong. Baby, I'm not fooling with y'all. Who does that? It was pure abuse. It was pure torture. It was pure mind game. Sorry, y'all. I left this out, so I need to cut in. So how about also around this time, allegedly Ryan O'Neal had a drug dealer that he used to use all the time. Well, now that Ryan O'Neal had moved out of the house with Tatum, the drug dealer ended up stopping by and saw Tatum was home alone. So the drug dealer barged in and actually assaulted Tatum. So Tatum calls her daddy. Baby, Ryan goes off on Tatum. Well, I know you had to been doing something. He ain't just done you like that for no reason. So obviously you was flirting with him. If you flirt with him the way you flirt with me, then I know you had to been doing it. But still Tatum tried to stay in her father's life. You know, she wanted her father's love. She didn't know what to do until Gossip claims she turned maybe around 20 years old. And the story says she went to some baseball game to meet up with her father. And when she got there, he punched her in the back of the head. I don't know what for, but the folks just say, I guess she sat down and next thing you know, her daddy punched in the back of the head. Whatever he punched her for, when Tatum felt that punch, that's when she was like, okay, uh-uh, no, wait a minute, no. And so she ended up cutting off contact with her father. You know, she distanced herself. Now to get back to Ryan and Farrah, they had one of those terrible hot and cold relationships. You know, the love and hate, the Whitney and Bobby, the Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton type of relationship. Always arguing and making up. And then they did a lot of drugs and they did a lot of drinking and there was a lot of turmoil. Now they did end up having their own son, a baby by the name of Redman. But allegedly Ryan told several people that he looked at his son Redman as a disappointment and if Ryan was running around telling everybody else that and the kind of person that Ryan was I'm pretty sure he had told Farrah that a number of times as well but you know she loved Ryan and so she stuck with him that is until the year 1997 when she ended up coming to their home and going down to the lower level of their home to a bedroom opening the door and finding Ryan huffing and puffing on top of actress Leslie Ann Stephenson or Leslie Ann Stephenson, who was 30 years younger than Ryan. And baby, what a scene they said it was. Allegedly, Farrah started to scream and shout and run away. And Ryan, trying so fast to get up and put his pants on and run after her, ended up putting both feet into the same pants leg and got right up and fell right and bust his head. But what he said next made you really want him to bust his head to the white meat. Because child, why come allegedly when Ryan ended up catching up with Farrah, he gave her this excuse. Farrah, come on, Farrah, come on. You know Tatum don't talk to me no more. You know my own daughter has flown the coop. So, you know, this girl, she's just a replacement. You know, somebody got to fill that spot. I miss my daughter. Baby, yes he did. Yes, he doggone did. Allegedly, he not only told Farrah that, baby, this man sat down for an interview and told the interviewer that. And that's why I said that sometimes, yes, I believe there was a little bit more uh, than him and Tatum just laying and going to sleep. You know what I'm saying? That's just like, come on, dude. You get caught doing that and you say that, hey, you know, that's like my daughter. I needed somebody to replace my daughter. Oh, oh, and he also blamed Farrah's menopause for him cheating. He said, you know, what was he supposed to do? Her menopausal body drove him to find somebody else. Anyway, Farrah allegedly was disgusted. And so she called the whole thing off, you know, and she went on about her life. 
That is until the year 2001 when she found out that Ryan was diagnosed with leukemia and he wasn't doing so great. And Farrah honestly still loved this man and so she came back and she cared for him and uh, nursed him and they got back together. Even though Ryan and Farrah reconciled, his relationship with his kids was still truly a hot mess. In the year 2007, his son Griffin came by to visit and while Griffin was visiting, I suppose he may have said something that his father deemed smart or his father didn't agree with. So Ryan, just like he always did, started to buckle up, buckle up and knuckle up, you know, going all upside Griffin's head. But instead of Griffin just taking it, this time he backed away and he went and grabbed a fireplace poker. So Ryan looking like, oh, oh, so you gonna grab a fire poker? So you didn't change that much? Were you rising up to me? Char Ryan ran to the back room and grabbed a gun and started busting caps. Every dog on wear just pop, 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 pop. And here go Griffin just duck and dodge and moving each way. Baby, they said that boy skated out of that doggone house. Literally. It looked like he had on roller skates. He got up out of there, honey. And this time, it truly seemed like Ryan O'Neill was going to have to pay for his mistakes, or not even his mistakes, pay for his doggone actions because he was arrested. But his son Griffin ended up dropping the charge. After this episode, things seemed to have quieted down a lot in Ryan's life. Allegedly, he and Farrah would still sometimes have spats, but mostly it seems like they got along good with each other. I do know that the story says that he and Farrah were still together when she ended up passing away in 2009 from cancer. She was 62 years old. But as good as Ryan had been acting uh, those last few years that Farrah was alive, Alive, baby at her funeral he ended up showing his behind again and it happened when a gorgeous young blonde walked into the funeral and walked up in the casket uh going up to view Farah. as soon as she comes to rest in front of the casket ryan makes a beeline baby excuse me excuse me excuse me going up to go and stand beside the lady allegedly he gets up there he looks down at Farah in the casket and then he leans over to whisper in the blonde's ear hey girl you got a drink on you? Hey, you got a car? And many people, normal, regular people, probably would have died at what happened next. Because the blunt turns around and says, it's Tatum, Dad. Your daughter? <laughs> Baby, Ryan O'Neal had stood up there and was trying to holler at his own doggone daughter. A hot mess if I ain't ever heard one before. See, I told y'all when Tatum was only like 20 years old, she ended up cutting off contact with her daddy. Well, he had not seen her in years. And so, uh, honestly, he truly did not recognize her. So it was an honest mistake, but still. And then allegedly when Tatum told him that, Ryan was just like, oh, oh, you changed. Well, I thought you were somebody else. So cool. So calm, so collected, not even probably a lick of embarrassment. But when Tatum was telling this story later on, because allegedly she's the one that told this story, and when she was telling it, she basically said she wasn't surprised by how her daddy reacted. She wasn't surprised that he tried to holler at her. She wasn't surprised by how he reacted. She said this was normal. This was normal for Ryan O'Neal. Normal to be standing over the dead woman's casket that he was with for 30 years trying to holler at his daughter. Now baby, that's all I got. And that's a doozy right there, so I hope you're happy with it because I ain't got nothing else for you on this video. I can tell you that uh, Ryan O'Neal did pass away on December the 8th, 2023. He had cancer and he was 82 years old. Allegedly, he and his daughter Tatum had made good on everything. You know, they had reconciled, but I don't think I can say the same for his sons because I know both of his sons, Griffin and Redman, uh, ended up having drug problems and they both blamed their father for that. So I don't know if they ended up getting back on good terms. And yes, I realize that once y'all really, really think about and realize the date of Ryan O'Neal's death, y'all gonna be like, now Ashley, now girl, you know you messy, you know you wrong because that man just passed away. I understand and you guys are absolutely correct. But I ain't gonna lie, when I got to reading about 
about Ryan O'Neal, this man's tea was so doggone juicy, I just decided to get it while it was an easy find. Go ahead and get it while it was splattered all over the internet. But there is an upside to this. Because Ryan O'Neal's scandal was not my intended next video, my intended next video is pretty much also done. So you guys won't have to wait for that one long at all. Anyways, this is the end of the old Hollywood scandalous tale of Mr. Ryan O'Neal. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please hit the like button. Uh, if you guys are new here, please subscribe. I love y'all, by the way. I don't know if I told y'all this. I was just thinking, golly, I love my subscribers. But I love my subscribers y'all are cool people and and we just we just here you know what i'm saying we just here but anyways i ain't gonna get all sobby on y'all again hit the like and subscribe and i will see you guys very very soon with the next video bye y'all